Hi everyone, welcome to another appointment with Moving To. This is Rostella from Going Expat, and today we talk together with Lorin about moving to Switzerland. Hi Lorin. Hi Rosello, nice to see you tonight. I'm glad nice you invited you. me. <laughs> it's a pleasure, it's a pleasure for me. And uh, so, Lorin is a Dutch woman, but she's living in Switzerland, in Canton Ticino, so it's the Italian uh, part of Switzerland, since long time. You can follow her on Instagram, on her account, Dutch Woman Abroad, to know a little bit more about her, her experience, her job, and what she likes to share on the social media. But today, we are going to focus, of course, on her life as an expat, or I should better say, an immigrant in Switzerland. So, Laurin, saying Switzerland is a little bit too generic, because as we say, you live in one specific area, which is the Italian part that we call Canton Ticino. Uh, tell us a little bit more how Switzerland is divided, please. Okay, Switzerland is divided in four parts. There are spoken four languages. It's the German part on the north, the French part on the west, on the east there's the part of Grigioni, and in the south there's the part of Ticino where we speak Italian. Since how long are you there? Uh, almost 30 years. Wow. 29 <laughs> years this year. Uh, it's really um, a long time. And it's a long time. Um, yeah. <laughs> Before uh, going to the topic, is there anything you want to say about uh, you, your uh, social media account? Just visit my uh, Instagram account, Dutch Woman Abroad. It's just, you know, I share what I like. Nothing special. Uh, it's just about a little bit about my life. Yes. <laughs> and uh, it's very nice to have you on social media because you are always very, very interactive and you always like to give your know, I know. You. I know. Uh, my birth sign is Gemini and it's with a Gemini ascendant. So I'm always, you know, talking, so writing and stuff like that. I mean, it's you know, a little bit like a, yeah. a person who's always trying to interact with other people because I enjoy it very much. Yeah, cool. And we have this in common. I'm Gemini too. So oh, cool. <laughs> that's why we are here, probably. <laughs> exactly. Cool. So let's go to our topic, moving to Switzerland, specifically in Canton Ticino. And of course, everything that we're going to say today is based on Lorin's um, experience in this specific part of Switzerland. In the description of the video, you guys will find also all the links that refer to the official website in order to check what is the right procedure based on your current situation. In general, um, what is the procedure to move to Switzerland? What do you need to do as a first step, let's say, to register, for example? Okay, since Switzerland is a country outside of the European Communion, one needs a permit to work or needs a permit to live there. You have two options. If you have a lot of money, the Swiss country will accept you because they say either you can take care of yourself or you have to find a job mm -hmm. where your uh, the person who gives you the job needs to apply for a permit for you. So it's not going there and thinking about settling and find a job. First, before you move into the country, you need to have a contract with a firm. Okay. Foreigners, they could be able to stay for up to three months in the country mm -hmm. without a permit. During that time, they might try to find for look for a job, but still the permit has to be um, licensed by the person who will give you the job. It's not that easy to move because some people, they think, you know, okay, I'm going to move to Switzerland. And it is not that easy because you need the permit it's it's yeah. out outside of Europe it outside of Europe it's like in many other countries if you would go to the United States you need a permit before you go there yeah it's probably uh, similar to the the USA where you need the, actually a sponsor but also in Europe if you are coming from uh, um, yeah a country that is not in the European Union you need a sponsor or someone like an employer who can guarantee for you 
uh, and exactly. take the responsibility of whatever you are going to do <laughs> in the country. Either you are already uh, rich enough or yeah. you have enough money. Um, yeah. For yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Or you already have a job. So if you guys are thinking to move to Switzerland, it is already time to look for a job, I would say. <laughs> Good. It is. It is. It okay. Is. And then the procedure, of course, is quite easy. So once you have the, the permission, then you can just go to the uh, city hall or the city where you are going to live. Yeah, and you transfer your domicile. Oh, yeah, well, just for the registration. You just you move from one. I, I moved from Amsterdam to Locarno, and that was a very easy pr procedure. Uh, you basically just register, so you are a resident. Exactly, exactly. Even, you know, uh, the, the, which something which I would like to uh, add is that if you come to Switzerland, if you will get a permit to work, you mm -hmm. will start out with a B permit, which will be valid for one year. Oh. And that if your contract is prolonged, that B contract will continue for another up to another 10 years, mm -hmm. after which you will get the C permit, which makes you a permanent resident. Okay, interesting. So basically yes. you need at least 11 years before becoming, uh, I mean, make sure well, that yes. you can build yes. the rest of your life there. Basically. Exactly. Well, they are very restricted, we can say. <laughs> Is it the same in all Switzerland or all in the country? No, it's in the whole Switzerland, it's okay. the same, yes. Okay. And um, the second question that I have, of course, is the one... That is always a little bit more um, tricky uh, because we can see that there are so many differences in any country. That is about the health system. Per se, the Swift Health System is a very good system. Mm. We have excellent doctors. We have excellent hospitals. Of course, you need to have a private insurance, which will cost you about... 500 euros per month and then you still have a, a 300 franc or euro uh we call it franquija I, don't... I guess that we can use threshold in this sense you have to the, the, fir the first 300 francs are in your account and after that the healthcare insurance will pay yeah i think the swiss health system is quite good because we do not have very long waiting times mm -hmm. if you are in need of an urgent appointment it might be the same day it might be the day after okay. and that is you know very different from other countries and i think that we are cared about very good because if we are in need of a specialist that will also be arranged on short notice it's good and uh, it's fast, of course, it's a little bit expensive. We pay a lot, but we also have a lot of services because mm -hmm. uh, maybe like Rosella, who's living in the Netherlands, there are many restrictions on what your health insurance covers. Yeah, indeed. Uh, of course, also in Switzerland, we can get extra coverage, but the basics of the Swiss uh, insurance is called the LAMAL, mm -hmm. and every single insurance company needs to comply with the, the Lamar rules, which is something which made the government. So you can have a certain amount of physiotherapy, a certain amount of prevention therapy, and that's the basic. And then every company can add other things, or you can also buy more okay. products from them. Maybe, you know, like uh, natural therapies, but there's a very good basis. So I think everybody is cared for very well. Mm -hmm. oh, and people who, who don't earn a lot, mm -hmm. they will have the possibility to get uh, money from the state. Okay, good. Because they just have to pay like two thirds or one third and then the, the, the state will pay the rest. But okay. that just depends on your income. Everybody has access to good health. Yeah, so it's one of the rights that uh, citizens exactly. uh, or, or people that are registered to have to be covered okay that's uh, important to to say and of course all this information are also important because if uh, uh, someone is thinking to move to switzerland and uh, already looking for a job they need to understand uh, how it works with salary but also what are the fixed cost they are going to face uh, uh, immediately so health insurance i believe is mandatory so everyone needs to have it yeah 
you cannot be there without uh, health insurance. It's mandatory, yes. Yeah. Another cost that everybody should pay, of course, is for some place where to live. Um, in the common idea, Switzerland is quite expensive. Uh, so to make an example, to understand uh, the cost of living more or less, uh, how much a one-bedroom apartment in Locarno or around Locarno? In, the area in Locarno, I think you can count on 1,500 euros francs is more or less the same right now mm -hmm. if you would be in the swiss part of germany in zurich you would pay like two thousand francs or even more okay. if you would say about you know the apartment i think that would cost you about one third of your income even there if people have a very low income the state will help you but of oh. course, that's not for expats, you know, that's for somebody who's been living there for a long time. Yeah. But still, we have, you know, also for people who do not earn that much, there's some help. Okay, okay. So we can say that the, that the government anyway takes care of the people that are living there in terms of uh, um, health insurance, as we said before, but also, also, but also for the rent. For this is important eh, when we choose to live somewhere, knowing that the government uh, put in place uh, some helps for people that are having issues. It's always nice to, uh, nice to know. The income, we are talking about it, and you just say that normally an apartment costs one third of the salary. But you were telling me something very peculiar that I never heard before. That is how the uh, salary is paid. Uh, so the average and how it's paid is not a netto, but it's brutal. It's brutal. I, okay, when I, when I speak for Ticino, Yes. The minimum salary would be 3,200 uh, Swiss francs, but it's brutto. Yes. And talking about an average uh, income, I think it's very difficult because mm -hmm. there's you know, so many kind of jobs with so many different yeah. kind of salaries. But you have to keep in mind that when you get your salary, it's brutto, which means you have to put money aside to pay the taxes at the end of the year. Um, in yeah. Switzerland, if you work in a company, you will get 12 salaries plus one, the 13th mm -hmm. month, like in Italy, where Rosella is coming from. And in average, the taxes that you will pay will be one and a half months worth of salary, which you will have to keep aside because, you know, the next year, you know, they will be knocking on your door <laughs> and saying, you Money. owe us you know, this much. And of course, the taxes are also about what you own. So if you own a house and everything, but, you know, just starting out with a normal person who is working for a company, you have to pay your taxes, which are worth one and a half month salary. That's very, very, very important to know, because again, we are giving the tip to everyone to look for a job before moving. So it might be... Uh, easy to hear about this uh, amount for the salary and think wow I'm gonna be rich but then yeah they are gonna give you the the salary brutal so you need to calculate how much more or less how much taxes you're gonna pay every year because at the end of the year you will do that and I even see for people who are Swiss who mm -hmm. are still struggling to keep in mind that they had to put aside money. Because oh, okay. a lot of people, even the Swiss, even though they know it, they will spend all the money and they won't have anything. So it's, you know, you really have to think about it that you have to keep away. Yeah. 15% of your income every month, put it aside. Yeah, yeah. That's a good and wise tip. So it's also better, I would say, moving to Switzerland, maybe having already some money saved, uh, just in case, because at the beginning can be easy maybe to miscounting. I can tell you a little story. Yes. When, when, when I came to Switzerland, I'm just recalling, when I came to Switzerland in uh, 29 years ago, I wanted to get a telephone line. Okay. And I called up the telephone company and they said, since you are a foreigner, we want to have 500 euros up front. 
<laughs> because you know, if you go away and you did not pay your bill, at least we have five hundred euros. Okay, and that was you know, it was it was really you know really discriminating. Yeah, and even people um, there are on the license plate of the car. Mm. There are the signs of people who are foreigners, but they don't live in Switzerland that long. So there's like a small sticker on it. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. and, what I, and, and what I told you before is when yeah. I moved to Switzerland, um, if you move from one European country to the other, I suppose you can keep your driver's license. For a while. I, yeah. had, I had to give back my Dutch driver's license and then I got the Swiss driver's license. Yeah. And it's something that you had to do immediately or you can wait for a while for the dry license? Um, no, I should have done it immediately. It's okay. you know, it's like a practice. You come in, you switch with the to to the other driver's license. I kept it off a little bit because I didn't have a car and I didn't oh. need it. And uh, I was quite late. I should have done it straight away. Yeah, okay, okay. Actually, yeah, I just uh, I just learned very recently that also in the Netherlands we need to switch the license. I didn't know, so I still had to do that. But but uh, here we can wait for 12 months. So after you had to be resident in the country for at least one year, and then it should be, I mean, it is better if you switch your license. Okay, I can, I, I can say you something yeah which is not what you've been asking but um if you go outside of your country mm -hmm. you can only drive a rented vehicle so if i go to the netherlands i cannot drive the car of my cousin with the dutch nice license plate okay. with my swiss driver's license i can only drive a rented car oh this is curious it's very curious um I can borrow the car of my friend and drive into Italy because her car's license plate is Swiss and I have a Swiss driver's license. Yes. But as since we have a lot of people who are working across the border, yes, Italians coming to Switzerland, yeah. they have an Italian driver's license. They might have a company car with a Swiss number plate. If they drive that car into Italy, yeah. they have to pay taxes. Oh, and they, okay. the, the car can be taken away. So it's really important that so if you go abroad, you can only drive okay. a rental vehicle. Okay, so let's say that I'm an expert. I'm Italian. I moved to Switzerland. So I switch my drive license. Of course, I get a Swiss one. If I go to visit my parents in Sicily, I cannot drive their car. I can only mm. drive a rental one. Okay, wow. Interesting. This is very curious. <laughs> yeah, because this is the thing, you know, like the Italians who work in Switzerland who will take yeah. their company car abroad, you have to pay uh, the taxes to import the car into Italy, actually. Okay. And otherwise, they can take it away. Okay. Something that nobody, you know, realizes, but it is. I it's, guess, it's, no, it's yeah, good. that's, uh, yeah, yeah, again, it's, uh, you are telling me a lot of, of, of things that I didn't know before. So, so we say, of course, there are four different uh, areas with four different languages. So how important it is to speak the language of the cantone or the area where are you living? So in your case, uh, Italian, uh, moving there for social life, but also to be able to work or English can be enough. English is no option. <laughs> it's really it's like actually, in Italy. <laughs> it's, it's absolutely no, no option. Um, if you come to Ticino, you know, learn Italian. Of course, you could get around speaking German, mm. but uh, it's not likable. It's, you know, if you want to get settled, if you want to be part of the, of, you know, the place where you're living, learn Italian. And uh, there's a lot of people, of course, you know, pensioners, Swiss German pensioners who will come to Ticino and they will never learn Italian, but it's, it's, it's just not nice. Yeah. So the, the language, I think if you want to really settle, learn the language, you might get around with German, but not always. Yeah. And also for work, I guess it's very, very important. That of course, there are some companies who will who are in need of people who speak other languages than Italian. But, you know, that's not often. 
Yeah. So if you come, if you come here, you need to learn Italian. And uh, but as we say, a lot of time while we were talking on social media in our chats, it's very important to learn a language of the country where you are living because um, it's not only nice for the people that can talk to you. It's not only important for work, but it's also important for you to really settle, start a, a real social life, get in touch with locals understand better the culture. I, I really believe it's relevant. Sometimes it can take some time. It can be long. It can also be difficult, but it's it's important. I guess we, we, we think a it lot. Is, it, it is very important. And of course, you know, locals, they will speak the, uh, the Ticinese dialetto. Oh. So, you know, I came, I came, I came to Switzerland to, to Ticino with a little bit of Italian because yeah. before I lived in Italy, and then, you know, trying to understand the dialect of Ticino was very difficult. Of yeah. course, I understand it after many years, but uh, that's uh, Italian is spoken by everybody. But still, mm. you know, if you go a little bit away from the big city, then yeah. you will be confronted with a dialect, which yeah. is a whole story. Yeah, this is another, another story. But I guess it's a little bit everywhere. If you go to villages... They speak dialect, and but they are all able to speak the official language anyway. Last question. I know that you might not like it that much, but um, I just want to, um, yeah, hear from you. And I guess everyone is curious to know. After almost thirty years abroad, how do you feel? I mean, we cannot define you an expert anymore. You are an, uh, an immigrant. I had talked about the difference of these two terms uh, in another video that you guys can find in the description of this one, if you are curious. But yeah, you are an immigrant. You are living big part of your life in Switzerland. How do you feel? What, what does it mean for you? <laughs> okay, of course, I live in paradise. <laughs> but, you know, it is a beautiful place uh, surrounded by mountains. We have lakes. We have rivers. We live in the middle of nature. Uh, it is beautiful. It's, you know, tranquil. You know, you don't have, you know, a lot of mess about, you know, it's not big, big city life. And of course, that's something that I miss. If you come to Ticino, it's not a modern life. Yeah. It's a small town. And uh, I miss that a bit because I grew up in The Hague. And after that, I lived in Amsterdam. Oh, wow. So I have to go back sometimes. Uh, people are very nice. And of course, there's a lot of things to do in Ticino, also cultural wise. Mm -hmm. But, you know, where you come from, you know, home is where the heart is. And it's very difficult, you know, to say, I leave home there and, you know, the heart, I take it to the yeah. new place. I'm very happy. I'm very happy about the choice I made, especially since I have now two grown up boys and they were born and raised here. They had the best childhood ever. They still have the best adolescence here. And so I was very uh, happy with my choice. But of course, some things are missing. <laughs> and also uh, coming from abroad, if you come into a small vi village like I came into, People have been childhood friends, so mm -hmm. they don't meet other people. So mm -hmm. I mostly um, see people who are expats, immigrants, or maybe people who have moved out from Ticino to study in the Swiss or the French part, and then they came back. So it's people who maybe moved away and came back, or people who moved here from another place. Mm -hmm. Because you start to have that, uh, well, open-mindedness in, in a way. Open-mindedness is missing a little bit mm. with the people in Ticino. But, you know, it's it's cultural, it's educational. It's if you're, if you're not used to certain surroundings, to, yeah. to certain influences, uh, it's strange for you and it's very difficult to go and get to know it. Of course. It's also out of needs, right? Because if you have been always in the same uh, village, in the same city, as you say before, you have your friends since ever and uh, yeah, you have your interests and your life goes in that direction. 
while if you have moved a little bit, even if you have come back, but you have been somewhere else, when you come back, you have another way uh, to look at the world, I believe. So then you kind of need also to have people that are more similar experience than yours. I guess this can be uh, experienced a little bit in everywhere, but as you said, in a small country, in small cities, small town, you feel it a little bit more, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, because it, it is, you know, if even, even if I, I live in a small village with 650 people, wow. even if I just go to Locarno, where yeah. we have 20,000 inhabitants, it's already different. Yeah. It's, you know, it, it's five kilometers. It's, you know, a bit more population, but the people are different and they also, you know, have a, a cultural life. It's different. In Ticino, you you one can find everything because it's good weather, it's a nice surrounding, you can do cultural stuff, you can do nothing. And uh, yeah, I think it's a really lovely place. Good. But if you would ask me if I would do it again, I would never leave the country. No, I think it's 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 so difficult because when you go away, yeah. You're always torn between two places. It's always, you know, this is good there and this is good there. And it's, you know, you're never at ease. It's always, hmm. and uh, for now, I'm I'm again in a phase that I say, I want to go to the Netherlands. I want to go to the Netherlands. So I go and visit a lot. Yeah. But then I come and home and then I'm happy again too. Yes, of course. There was a, a quote that said that basically you will never be home again once you exactly the exactly because you are That's home that. in both place, but maybe in none of them. So it's it's a weird feeling, and only it's... people that have moved abroad can understand. I believe <laughs> so, exactly yeah. exactly. Good. So next time you come into the Netherlands, we are gonna meet. That's we're sure. gonna meet on the first of October in Rotterdam. We're going yes. to have coffee. Yes, I'm really meeting. looking forward. Yeah. So if you guys are uh, following us on our uh, social media, so on Instagram, you will see our pictures together. That's for sure. <laughs> so yes. that's the date. And uh, I guess for now we have covered uh, enough. Of course, if you guys have any question, please reach out to me or to Laureen directly via uh, commenting this video or the uh, Instagram account that, again, is going to be in the description of the video so we can give you answers to your curiosity. So thank you, everyone, for watching the video. Thank you, Laureen, to be with me. And um, I talk to you soon. Thank you, Rosella, for this opportunity. It was really nice to be with you. Likewise. Bye. Bye-bye.